Hello everyone. Hi. Um, thank you again for joining. My name is Anshuman. Uh, let me just write down the topic for today's class. Just give me one second. Hello, everybody. I am using an iPad. I'm using an iPad. And as you can see, my iPad's uh, time setting is broken. So it still shows 9.41 AM on Tuesday, 9th, 9th of January, uh, <laughs> even though it, we are already in, in, in March. All right, so uh, a lot of you are here. A lot of you are still joining in. Um, Maybe uh, we can wait a couple of moments before we start. I'll, I'll introduce myself uh, when we start, along with giving context of the session. Um, and, um, and I, will, I would also then like start with the session and take questions, et cetera, right? you don't hear, then please reload on Chrome, preferably. Do you use Agora for streaming backend? Yes, yes. We use, uh, this is built on top of Agora, yes. Uh, just just a quick question like for everybody here because I am seeing a few comments is is my screen visible clearly and am I also visible uh, uh, clearly on on the screen okay okay and again it is possible that I am not visible as well because I'm traveling and therefore um, uh, therefore my face might not be as visible but like is the iPad screen visible to you can you can you see what is written on the iPad screen? OK, great, 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 great. That's all I wanted to check. Great. Awesome. OK, all right. So uh, in that case, we can get started. Um, very quick introduction about myself. My name is Anshuman. Uh, and and um, I was a, <laughs> I was a, software engineering student about 10, 11 years back. So I graduated from IIIT Hyderabad in 2010. I joined Facebook as my first job, where I was part of the Facebook messages and chat team. And I, one of the reasons why I'm taking this session is because in those days, I led the team that built out Facebook Messenger. So uh, one of my specialities is that I understand messaging uh, really, really well. Right. So I, I built out um, uh, Messenger um, in in their Silicon Valley, California office, right? Uh, and then, like one of my other stints was helping set up the Facebook London office, where I helped hire the first hundred engineers for the Facebook London office, which was the um, which was the uh, uh, which was the first engineering office for Facebook outside of uh, the U.S. So. Um, Raghavin says that your screen time is not broken. It is Apple's policy for screen sharing. The first generation iPhone was announced by former Apple CEO Steve Jobs on January 9, 2007 at 9.41 AM. That's great to know. Uh, all right, so Facebook does not have engineering team in India. Um, unfortunately, all of the engineers hired in India are hired for the London office. <coughs> that being said, I'm no more with Facebook. I am currently um, one of the co-founders at Scalar Academy. Um, in prior to that, I, I, I actually um, moved back to India. I started interview bit uh, to again help with uh, coding education, and um, later on we moved. Uh, I mean, realized that content is not everything, and therefore um, started uh, Skiller to help with tech education. Um, the folks asking for my salary <laughs> as well as the value of Skiller. Uh, guys, I don't get paid anything. I, I work for free. Uh, 
all right cool um so um let's let's get started right so let me let me talk about what today's session is about so today's session is uh, about helping you um understand the architecture of telegram i have done a few um, sessions earlier about like the architecture of uh, messenger whatsapp how were they different we will we'll probably just um, touch upon on like how would the architecture of a platform like telegram is is uh, will work and and like a lot of it will have a lot of overlap with by the way the architecture of messenger and architecture of um a platform like um, whatsapp so for those of you who have already attended those sessions i'm just giving a heads up there might be a lot of repetition so please don't worry it's a <laughs> it's just the way telegram is built uh so so we will cover that aspect and then like we will obviously take questions we'll talk about common pitfalls common mistakes people make when they design a software at this scale um this is more of high level design or system design uh session we will not be coding a new telegram app so i'm not going to be teaching you app coding i'm going to be talking a lot more about scalability of an app like telegram right so this is more of a system design um session rather than a coding session so that's call out number 1 call out number 2 is that while i'll try my best to go at a decent pace um uh, there are a lot of us here right? so some of us might not be able to um go along as fast so i might have to slow down at times just to make sure i answer everybody's question so i would just request everybody to be patient during that time when i'm answering the question because you you know like all of us should learn together we shouldn't leave anybody behind um cool awesome so um <clears throat> so so let's let's get started right so now whenever you're designing any app and by the way like a lot of you might already be software engineers so a lot of you might aspire to become software engineers um whenever it comes to design a software the here is i mean this is my playbook that i usually follow and i would recommend everybody to follow a similar playbook uh, the playbook is you don't directly jump into the design the first step is you define mvp minimum viable product um mvp is or like the the v0 product right like whatever you believe is is a product that works don't go into designing the with all the features right in the first go uh that's all, always a bad strategy you want to start with a, a minimal set of features and then you build on top of that so first thing is you define that two is you estimate scale that you are building for uh right like for example if i build uh an app that can do a plus b and i only get let's say one request per second that app looks very different from let's say me getting a billion request every single second asking me to do a plus b right so it's also important to understand what kind of scale are you dealing with what amount of data would you have to store what kind of qps would you etc would you be dealing with so that is usually the second step the third step is you um you lay out design goals i'll talk about this step later on to explain what design goals actually mean what kind of options do you have then the fourth step um that above as you rightly mentioned is api design you design what kind of api should let's say a telegram expose to uh, the outside world um api again for those of you who don't know uh, think of this as how can the outside world access you right like how, what kind of functions can they call for those of you who might have written code code is usually um i mean you have access to a bunch of different kind of functions right for example you have sqrt for calculating square root uh you might have a sort function to sort an array very similarly think of api as a function that is available to you uh in the real world right so uh basically what kind of functions do you want to expose to rest of the world if you are telegram that's that's basically api design and then the last piece is your design deep dive on you basically here look at where, how do you look at storage what kind of caching 
what is business logic etc etc right? so you we talk about all of that in the last section do the steps make sense to everybody all clear yes by the way i'm going to be uh, asking a lot of you guys to do yes no yes no all throughout the session so you see those yes no buttons utilize them just click on them whenever you feel things are going great um now uh in this discussion i'm not going to be talking about uh, languages programming languages because to be honest once the design is clear you can build it in on any programming language you can use a java you can use a python doesn't matter um i'm also by the way i mean uh, i could have done this session as an hld session or a lld session lld is where we talk about the objects and the class design etc i'm again like this i'm not going to be discussing the design object design either i'm going to be talking about high level design hld which is um also called as system design just for reference because a lot of you are asking about um the programming language messenger was built in java um and uh, certain co components of uh uh whatsapp were also in java certain in <clears throat> whatsapp was um, also certain components in java certain in 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 c++ um telegram actually to be honest i don't know in reality what language is that written in however knowing their founders it is very possible it was written in c++ all right okay um the last portion uh, some folks are asking me to elaborate i mean this is design deep dive where we look at what storage to use how do i cache what is the business logic whatsapp was not built in erlang erlang helps you build a very quick um chat however it doesn't scale really well <clears throat> okay cool uh, let's let's get started right let's let's do step 1 step 2 step 3 step 4 step 5 step 1 what is our mvp right so define mvp for 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 telegram what are the minimum features you would want to have for your telegram app how many um, right so one is sending of messages i mean telegram i should be able to send messages to people right to someone so this becomes more of one on one messages right what else would you want to in send messages i might also want to send media files media files could have uh, photos videos etc right now there is a second feature which is group chat now group chat i will keep as v2 v1 we'll discuss group chat in today's session as well especially in the context of telegram because telegram is very interesting it it actually allows you group chats which have thousands and thousands of people there are these groups that have thousands and thousands of people and like people keep sending messages there and telegram still supports it um so so we'll talk about that um what else would you want in a telegram kind of an app what else is an mvp calling video call uh, okay all right calling also i would keep as part of v1 if you remember both whatsapp and telegram were initially launched without the calling feature that came in much later on so i would video call slash audio call i would keep it as a v1 maybe here i mean we we've talked about <laughs> sending message we also need to be able to load the app and see what messages do we have right so which is fetching conversations fetching list of conversations and fetching messages within those conversation right note that conversation and messages are different conversation is who all do you have conversation with for example on my screen i might see uh, jatin ganesh santosh diksha etc etc all of them as as uh, people that i have had conversation with um 
whereas fetching messages is when I click on one of those names, then being able to see my recent chat with, with those folks. Um, somebody said notifications. Absolutely. So apart from this, you also need notifications. Whenever I get a new message, I should be notified through a, either a push notification or something, which is push notification, which tells me that the, I have a new message, which I can then click on and, and look at. Right. Uh, there is also stuff about delivery report, which is in fact, let me write it this like this. Right. So send delivered scene. Also important, I would, however, uh, keep that as um, as V1. I'm sorry, I'll have to kick out a few people from the chat because there's just a lot of um, noise being created by them. Right. Uh, one other thing that was mentioned was maybe their online status. Online status as well, I would definitely want to have, but maybe uh, in the V1. We'll talk about all of these, by the way. And then there is profile, profile picture, etc., etc. There is, in fact, today Telegram also supports um, secret messages, right? Like, so how do you build secret messages, all of that? We, we should also explore that later on. Um, so profile. Secret messages. Encryption, end to end encryption. We, do, we should ex explore that later on. I would, however, in the first release, which is B0 release, right? Like the first release that you want to put out, put out in the, um, in the play store there, I wouldn't want to include all of those. I would want to just release the minimal set and test out whether it is working or not. Right. Typing indicator as well. Sure. I mean, so there, that too, I will keep in the V1. V0 is just basically replacement of SMS. So think of how SMS used to work, right? Like, and you're trying to replace them. Uh, you would want to build out very, very basic SMS, SMS. Now there is one more decision to take, by the way, and this is a core decision. If you if you see, I mean, WhatsApp. The way WhatsApp works is that it is device oriented, right? Like I have WhatsApp on my mobile, and therefore all of my messages will come to my mobile. If I lose my mobile, then I lose all of my messages. So all of my my, my messages are actually stored on my device. It's a device first design. It is exactly like SMS. I get SMS on my mobile device. If I lose my mobile, I lose all of my SMSs. Now, Telegram, however, is not device first. On Telegram, you can install Telegram on your um, on your um, uh, laptop as well. You can have a, 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 a mobile app as well. Uh, you have web Telegram. You have mobile Telegram, and they need. I mean. Even if, let's say, your mobile is not present, if you lose your mobile, if you again log in into your Telegram again, you'll find all of your. Other thing to know that Telegram is different from WhatsApp in the sense that it is not tied to a device. And why is that an important decision? Because that dictates whether you have to store all of the messages with you or not. WhatsApp does not need to store all of your messages. All WhatsApp needs to do is that when a user one sends a message, WhatsApp acts as a persistent queue. It's more or less a queue. Just and WhatsApp only says that I will take guarantee of making sure this message gets delivered to you too. Once it's delivered, then I need not store this message. WhatsApp will not store this message. It will actually get rid of that message. It will just say that the message is stored on YouTube's device. Whereas in the case of Telegram, it is U1 sends a message to Telegram. Telegram will deliver it to user number two, but it will also keep a copy with itself. So that if tomorrow U2 comes back from a different device and says, give me all of my messages, I can still fetch all of my messages from here. So there is a copy of my mailbox present on Telegram servers. 
this is a very key difference guys because this makes a lot of difference to the complexity of what you're building um building a whatsapp is easier building a telegram like thing is harder uh, and you will see that why that is the case later on but is that differentiation clear this is this is a key product decision to take right the product decision is that i do not want my messaging to be device centric it is present with me um, wherever i go right even if i log in from my friend's laptop i will have access to all of my messages however whatsapp even if i log out and i log in from my friend my friend's mobile i don't have access to all of my messages whatsapp says i will not store your messages with me i will deliver it to your device your mobile your mobile will have all of those messages <clears throat> and some folks are saying that there is whatsapp web whatsapp web is very different guys whatsapp web actually works from your mobile so the way it works is that it it just shows what your mobile has it's just a thin client it just shows what your mobile has you delete messages or your mobile is lost your whatsapp web will have no way in fact when your mobile think about this when your mobile switches off your uh, whatsapp web that stops working it will not uh can like st keep receiving the messages and then uh, at least it doesn't work for me <laughs> and the reason is that whatsapp works as a device centric thing right it, it works on your mobile from mobile sure i mean your laptop if it is connected then then it can transfer from it can sort of sort of mirror the messages on 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 your laptop Uh, and uh, like mirroring can happen by various means right? like it could happen just because you're on the same network it could happen because you're connected via bluetooth whatever whatever reason like right? so if my mobile and my laptop are connected then we can exchange messages so it can mirror uh, those messages however whatsapp would never send the message directly to my my laptop whatsapp to whatsapp the primary device is my mobile it will only send messages to my uh, mobile and that is what what it takes guarantee for that's it <clears throat> right backup is done separately backup is very simply saying that when i take do a backup on my mobile device when i said take a backup my mobile has all of my messages right so i i just create a backup file which has all of these messages and i store it somewhere right that is very simple i mean look i mean if today i have a movie i want to back up that movie if that that is present on my laptop i can go and store it in a google drive or can store it in microsoft drive wherever i want so when you say give like back this up some in some fashion if i have extra memory then i mean sure everything is present on my mobile device i create a big file out of it and then i back it up somewhere <clears throat> we will talk about message encryption by the way um uh, end when later on we will we'll talk about all of that encryption piece let's come to that later i'll i'll talk about encryption as well so we there is one key difference in in uh, the design choice or at least the the requirement is that it's need in the case of telegram it need not be tied to a device there the messages need to be stored on telegram server because um they i can access it from any client all right okay so if this is done then let's look at step 2 step 2 is estimation of scale and the reason why we do this is to answer two question there are two questions that i need answers to one is am i going to be storing so much information which will not fit in one machine that is question number 1 right because then if i if it's not going to fit in one machine then i will need a way to figure out how to split this information amongst multiple machine so that is question number 1 that i want to answer through estimation of scale do i need to shard data sharding data mean means splitting data right and this is just to say that can all my data fit in one machine and when i say my i mean telegram is it's not one user but it is the entire telegram right 
fit in one machine. That's question number one. Question number two is, uh, what is QPS? Because this basically decides how many apps, etc., would I need to be able to process uh, everything, right? QPS is query per second. So what is query per second, estimated query per second for Telegram? So that then I know how many machines would I need. Right now, let's do very quick estimations. Quick estimations on how many number of active users would be there on Telegram. How many messages would they send on a daily basis? How many times people read messages, etc. And that would help us estimate or like give an answer to both of these questions. <clears throat> Can somebody tell me like what's just just maybe? Um, quick um, estimation of what is, let's say, the number of messages being sent every day on Telegram? Some some folks are saying 1 billion, some folks are saying um, 50 million, some folks are saying a few hundred millions. Uh, sure. Um, by, by the way, just, just uh, talking about the um, numbers that have been publicly released, and this is there is no way of estimating that, but basically, Telegram does about a twenty to forty billion messages sent every day. Twenty to forty billion every day, right? Um, now imagine I just take twenty as the as the limit, right? Let's let's just say that we are we have twenty billion messages being sent every day. What does this mean? How much data are we generating? How much data are we? So if there are 20 billion messages being sent, right? Now, what would you say the average message size is? Imagine that we are only talking about text messages right now, right? Like we'll look at media files, etc. later on. I'll, I'll discuss that separately. But let's say if you're only sending text message, what is the average size? Sure. I mean, uh, it could be every single character that you send, every single character. When you say, for example, type A, A is one byte. When you say hi, it is two bytes. Let's say in the worst case, I mean, it would be what, 100 characters, 500 characters, not, not more than that. Let's assume 500 characters, right? So every single message, message takes about 500 bytes. So I have 500 bytes being sent every day and I have 20 billion messages being sent every day, right? What does this come to? What is how many bytes of data am I generating? This is approximately 20 into 500 gigabytes, which is 10 terabytes. 10 terabyte, if, if I'm not wrong, yeah, 10 terabyte. 10 terabyte is the amount of information I'm generating on a daily basis. Now, if you're building Telegram, you're going to be building it for 10 years, right? Like you would want that you don't run out of space in, in 10 years, right? Like at least 10 years, if not more. If you're building it for 10 years, every day you're generating this amount of information. So this is information being generated in one day. How many days do we have in a year? We have 365 days in a year. And we have, we're building it for 10 years. Um, Vikram says that unable to see my screen. Guys, is my screen visible? Just, just very quick check. Okay, it is visible. Vikram, uh, you can just reload the page. Maybe there is an uh, internet issue on your end that might have caused that. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Cool. So if this is the case, then we basically end up generating about three, six, five, zero, zero terabyte, which is, um, if I divide by thousand, then it is almost 36.5 petabyte of information, right? 36 petabyte is 
if you look at today your laptop right your laptop is um is what 1 terabyte uh, of hard disk so if you have to store 36.5 terabyte you need 36500 laptops last 10 is for number of years uh last 10 is for number of years but just is telling you about the scale of data if i was using your laptop to store all of this information then um, i would need 36500 machines to be able to store all of this information that is a lot of machine so the clear answer for the for the first question does all of the data fit in one machine no it definitely does not fit in one machine <laughs> you you will need a lot of machines to be able to store this data and therefore you'll need to think about sharding and you'll need to think about compression etc etc we'll we'll look at that as well we'll talk about sharding um in in the next part when we look at design how do we split this data amongst a lot of machines obviously you need to store all of this in a big data center a uh, data center would have a lot of machines um how what data goes where what whose data goes where all of that we will we will look in in designing now also fair to say that if there are 20 billion being messages being sent in a day and if we assume that um for every message sent there is at least one read request that happens right like i i load my mailbox i look at let's say a particular thread um if the read to write ratio was even one on one even then i'll be sending about 40 billion request right? like 20 billion read writes 20 billion reads i'll be sending 40 billion request every day uh web i'm i'm right now building v0 without the group chat so group chat is part of v1 and we will de design the group chat as well but let's first design the v0 without the group chat just for one on one conversations and then we will look at group chat as well as um and and we sh we should also look at search you're very right we should also look at search in fact let me also note it down that i will also explain how search would work here but first let's actually um let's actually just do basic estimations for the v0 v0 right um and then sure i will change my estimates as well I'll, i'll change my estimates when we look at group conversations by the way i mean just letting you know that the even the second conversation this is to find out how many machines i would need how many what order of machines i need this is also going to be fairly high because if you look at 40 billion messages in a day that is 14 into 10 raised to 9 divided by 86400 requests in a day uh, which is approximately 40000 into 1 million divided by 86000 which is approximately 500k qps this a single machine cannot handle you still need a lot of machines assuming that a single machine for the kind of amount of work that it needs to do why 10 to the 9 divided by 86400 so 41 billion is 10 to the 9 1 billion is equal to 10 raised to the 9 right and 86400 is number of seconds in a day so i'm trying to find the queries per second 40 billion is the number of total requests that we estimated 20 billion messages sent and i said if i assume that every time you're sending a message you're doing at least one read read on your mailbox right like finding out what are my recent messages if you do one read for every uh, every message sent then you at least have 40 billion requests you might even have more but you at least have 40 billion at least make sense all right so the answer is um it will much higher that that is true that is true the answer is all of the data does not fit in one machine we need to actively think about sharding and the qps is reasonably high and therefore we will also need to look at a lot of application servers to be able to handle this load uh we'll come to that uh, sanjay as well don't worry i mean we'll answer all of the questions one by one let's let's go one by one all of your questions will be answered don't this is number of seconds in a day okay all right so let's go to step number 3 which is what is our design goal now let me first explain what design goals could be 
when you design a very high scale system um in a high scale system typically uh typically you are either designing a system which is very very available uh and this is for system design specifically or very consistent for example when you design a banking application right uh bank stores your bank balance they store the transactions you want banking application to be very consistent you you don't want your bank showing a wrong bank balance you will sue the bank if if they if they show a wrong bank balance right and it is okay if if they are very consistent it is okay to maybe for the bank websites to go for maintenance from time to time or maybe not available at some point of time so in the context of system design there is something called a cap theorem where you mostly mostly you have to choose between consistency and availability right do you want your system to be always available which means your system never goes down or do you want it to be highly consistent you have to choose between those two you can't have everything right uh and and uh, i can probably spend some time talking about why you can't choose all of them cap theorem why does it work etc etc uh, maybe for now i will just leave you guys with the resource to study the cap theorem later on whenever you have time uh, given like we won't be able to cover everything in this master class um so i'll i'll leave you guys with the resource later on to show you why all three are not possible theoretically why they all three are not possible so usually you have to choose between one of these two right um p is p means partitioning partition tolerance and in any distributed system you have to support partition tolerance uh, partition tolerance is like when when let's say there is there are two data sources within your system that can't talk to each other but they can talk to the outside world then does your system work or does it stop working partitions will happen right and then you have therefore you'll have to support those so consistency and availability right like um for a telegram kind of an app for telegram kind of an app what do you think is more important is it more important for it for telegram to work all of the time or is it more important to make sure that it is consistent and there is no wrong answer so please feel free to to share your opinion all right a lot of you are saying availability a lot of you guys are saying consistency um look i mean you can make one of those choices and design based on that usually however uh, usually however um messaging apps try to optimize for consistency for the following reason messaging apps are very very driven by humans right and therefore uh if there is a message that doesn't reach you or reaches out of order or maybe uh it tells you that the message was delivered but it was never delivered that can lead to a lot of complicated scenarios and again i take this usually take this example which is um which is very informal but uh think about think about there's a girl who proposes to you and says i love you on the chat and the message never reaches you right or <laughs> um it gets delivered uh maybe uh a day later at etc right that you would be really really pissed off about um however if the girl sent that message and immediately got back a response saying that by the way um i mean by the way telegram is down and therefore um can you please try later on then it's okay because obviously like the message will be retried but if the message never reaches you the other person believes that you ignored the message and that is bad you just lost out <laughs> on a person for for random reason right uh, and therefore i mean because of these human scenarios um messaging apps usually optimize for consistency they they want to make sure that there is consistency uh especially immediate consistency because in a flow of conversation where there is a lot of back and forth uh you don't want messages going out of order or in a particular way to create confusion or emotional confusion especially so um 
I mean, again, you can make a point saying that, hey, look, I mean, availability is more important. I will build an app which is more available, maybe may not be consistent. That's fine. Um, <laughs> somebody saying that I never got such messages. Maybe WhatsApp is not in not consistent. But um, consistency, at least in today's example, I will optimize for consistency. Um, Ravi, uh, I, I know that you believe that eventual consistency should be fine. But even there, I mean, think about cases when there is a back and forth of communication happening, right? So while in an hour from now, I will get all of the messages in the right order. But while this back and forth is happening, something not being or like something being shown out of order or maybe some messages missing can again cause a fight can cause a, a, a fight at least in a human ecosystem so uh, that's why like a lot of apps uh, i mean messenger whatsapp telegram they all are built to support consistency and again like once you say consistency is my primary goal then you try to build a design which is as available as possible Right, so you want to make sure that you're still designing so that your <laughs> app is not down every second or every uh, every day, etc. But, but like again, like you say that look, my primary priority is consistency. So one, um, at least for today's session, I'll say that I will design for consistency. Two is what is the the other goal that I would I would design this app for. Um, one of the other things is that I would, I mean, given this is a telegram, which is a real time chat app, it's chat and not email, right? It's chat. So therefore I would want to have low latency. I would want to make sure that when I send a message, it reaches you really, really fast. It doesn't take a few minutes to reach you because then we can't have a flowing conversation, right? So the other thing I want is low latency. <clears throat> and then, I mean, there are all of the other things. Drumel, exactly, fault tolerant. You can't lose information, can't lose data, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That is common for all systems. For example, if Telegram loses your messages, you'll be very, very, uh, you'll, you'll be very, very pissed off at them. So um, those will still uh, still be there. Shaibaz, just just wait. Wait. We'll we'll come to the part on how to design so that I, even at that scale. It works really, really fast. We'll, we'll put that in design. That is what system design is all about. OK, so we've set our design goal as well. Low latency, high consistency. Now we come to step four. Step four is designing APIs. What APIs do I need? Right? Like What, what sub request should it support? Right. So let's first design the basic APIs. What is the availability in this case? Availability is me being able to send a message and the message going through. Um, if I get a, uh, if I get that Telegram is down, that is Telegram being not available. So um, certain times, certain apps are down, right? like or bank uh, websites are down. That is unavailability. Can you please explain consistency and availability in a chat applications context? Because if messages get delivered a day late, uh, I, do I consider it as a low availability system? Um, that's a very good question. So how do we bring um, latency into the picture? Um, I, I think when I say consistency, I one of the things that I'm implying is that uh, it is, as I say, like consistency with low latency, right? So that means. If something gets delivered a day late, that is as good as the message failing, which, which actually impacts your availability. Uh, should we let, let me actually design <laughs> some of this and then all of your questions will be answered there. OK, all right, let's let's design the APIs first, right? What are my basic, basic APIs? Web Hub, correct. Like you'll have login. Uh, sure, we'll have a login app, um, like login API. Given that is common, I'm not going to message, mention that. But let me write the most common ones. Uh, one is sending a message. I'm going to put the arguments later on. But let me first first write down the 
major one side. The other is fetch conversations. And the third would be fetching messages. Let's now define what all do we need. Like, so for example, when it comes to um, sending a message, and sure, I mean, in the login, you'll need OTP validation, et cetera, as well. So let me also write that, right? So for is login and then some some arguments or maybe verify login which will have OTP and then OTP will get verified etc right so all of that is there but let's come to these three primary APIs because they are they are uh, um, prime to my v0 what would be the arguments to these guys what was the argument to send message sender ID receiver ID sure okay so so let's say user ID who is sending. Then I have recipient ID. I have a timestamp when this was sent. I also have the message content, right? So let's just say content. Is this enough though? Is this enough? There could be attachments, sure. Attachments. This is your media files. Location, sure, you can put location as well. Now, here is something interesting. Yeah, some of you are are there on the uh, on the right track, but let me let me elaborate a scenario. So imagine I have my mobile, right? I have this mobile and here is a telegram server. Let's say my mobile sends here a high message and I am in a flaky internet, right? So I send the high, but I don't get the acknowledgement back because by that time, my, for some reason, the internet connection broke or whatever happened, right? Now, what I don't know as, as my mobile is that whether this message went to the telegram server or not right i do not know that so what my mobile would do when it comes back online is it will retry again the same message it will send again hi what that means is that there needs to be some way for telegram server to identify that hey look if i have gotten this message before then this one is a duplicate and by just looking at the content, I can't say that this is a duplicate because it is possible that the sender actually sent two highs, high and then high, right? Like you, the person could have could have sent it. So how do you deduplicate? And and a lot of you are exactly right. You need to have some form of message ID, right? Some message ID which I can take a look at, and then I know that if message ID is the same, then this message is actually a duplicate. And how do you generate this message ID? Um, so some folks said UUID. UUID is just a way of making sure that you generate a unique message ID. Right? And unique message ID is just, let's say, for, for example, it could be a combination of, let's say, if I am a client, if I'm a mobile device, it could be a combination of my IP address, maybe plus current timestamp, plus maybe some, some hash of the current message. That way I end up generating a string, which is completely unique. And then I can take a MD5 hash or a SHA hash or whatever hash of this later on, just to make sure that the, um, the string is still string readable string, right? But you still need a message ID in this IP so that you can deduplicate. All right. So we have user ID, recipient ID, timestamp, content, attachments, and message ID, right? Cool. So this is sending a message. And then uh, as we create our V1, V2, where we'll have seen, delivered, et cetera, et cetera, we'll look at all of those being incorporated into the APIs as well. Uh, the other thing I'm also taking into account is that there is some way of validating sessions through an auth token or something, which is probably present in the API, maybe not, may, may not be present in the API as well. If you want, we can include it here. Auth token to validate 
to authenticate the user if are you the right person actually who's sending the request uh, but again like it need not be a part of the api you can do the authentication through various other means as well so therefore i did not mention it how would you think the fetch conversation would work Again, voice call and uh, video call as well. We look at V one, V two, right? Like, let's not um, complicate that right now. So, fetch conversation. What will be the arguments to this second API? Okay. So, you, you first have the user ID. Whose conversation am I fetching? Right, and fetch conversation is the first screen that you see on Telegram, right? Which is a lot of your thread of conversations. Who all did you have conversations with? It is that. So you have user ID that you send. What else do you send? You would have a page limit, right? Like you'll have how many conversations do I want to see? Right, like do I do I want to see ten conversation, twenty conversation, um, hundred conversation? But you'll need some Con number of conversation, right? So let me also write here num conversations. Also, you will need, I mean, so when I scroll down, let's say I ask for 20, right? And when I'm scrolling down, then I might need the next 20, right? Which is 21 to 40, which means I would need some form of offset. Offset is what is the starting point? Like in my pagination, what is the starting point? So give me message number 21 to 40 could be that offset is 20 and then give me the next 20 messages. So I have number of conversations. I have offset. I have user ID. What else could we possibly have? And here comes an interesting use case, by the way. This is, um, this is a use case for all mobile devices. Usually, mobile devices are data sensitive, which means most mobile devices might not be running on Wi-Fi. Uh, Delta Sync, exactly. Most mobile devices might not be running on, on Wi-Fi. That means they might be running on some data, and therefore, um, they will be they would not want to transfer a lot of data from Telegram to the mobile device. Right? So therefore, they are very sensitive of data being transferred. So if I already have all the messages, going and asking for give me 20 most recent messages, uh, that transfers 20 most recent messages data to me, me right? Like, which is a complete waste of data. Can I somehow say that I already have all of the conversations till this timestamp? Give me new information after this timestamp. So imagine, um, imagine I got disconnected. At 8.53, right? I have everything till 8.53. And then I reconnect at 8.58. So then I can go to Telegram and say, please give me new conversations after 8.53 AM because I have everything till 8.53 PM. Why even fetch 20 conversations? That way I can save on data. This is, by the way, this is a standard uh, technique, which is called Delta Fetch. Delta fetches, you're only fetching the delta and not the entire set of conversations because you want to save on the bandwidth. You want to save on data. Uh, <clears throat> so one other parameter you might want to keep here is that whether you want delta fetch or not, which could be true or false, true slash false, and the timestamp. So then you only fetch information after this timestamp. Newer than this timestamp. And timestamp could be sure nanoseconds, could be milliseconds, whatever it is. And timestamp is like in your mobile device, when when you fetch main fetch last time, whatever is the timestamp, note that. If delta is true, then yes, offset and num count will be ignored. Correct. What if some of the messages are deleted slash updated? Then in your delta fetch, you include that. I mean, delta fetch is basically after this timestamp, what all happened? If I'm using the app after one year, 
yes, then there's the problem that you'll have a lot of messages to be transferred, right? In that case, you can overwrite. You can your I mean, it's it's a design or it's a business logic thing. You can overwrite and you can say that, uh, hey, look, there are too many messages. There are too many messages, and that you can return as a response. And in that case, the mobile then makes another call without delta fetch, and only asks for the latest twenty messages or latest twenty conversation and so forth. Delta fetches uh, timestamp to current timestamp. Correct, correct, correct. By the way, I mean this. You can design even without the delta fetch. I'm just mentioning it because it is important to understand. Delta fetch is a very standard technique. It's used in almost all, uh, um, all.